Okay, so let's pretend that you have all the mod 6 installed. And let's pretend you don't care that they have a server pack. So, And you want to install this on your Bisect hosting server. And it's probably the same for any of the other servers that I'm not affiliated with. So you wouldn't click play. You would right click on it. And I did. I right clicked on it. And you choose open folder. There are some folders that we need to upload to our server. So, minimum folders that you're going to need are config and mods. Additional folders that you might need, if they exist, would be also default configs and scripts. This one doesn't have scripts so we won't select it so at this point with those three selected we're going to right click on it and we're going to choose um, compress which is under sun 2 for windows apparently it could be elsewhere if you rejiggered all your context menus that is now putting that into a compressed zip file We'll open it up in just a moment so that we can preview the contents and the structure of it. Okay, now it is done zipping. On Windows, it's going to highlight here. It chooses the top thing that you selected as your default name for the zip file. You can call it whatever you want. Let's just call it whatever. So now we have this whatever that has this little zip on its folder. If you had file extensions turned on, you would see that it is a zip file that says the type is zip. So we won't worry about it, but this is what we're going to upload. So if I went into that, looked at it, you would see that that has that's a zip that contains config, default configs, and mods. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to upload this to our bisect server, which is right here which is empty and we're in the file manager and we're just going to find that folder and drag and drop it and put it right there so I prematurely closed mine but if I know curse words it's nope I don't so you want to keep your folder open it just makes it easy to get to Otherwise, you got to remember that you're in this big, long path up here. And if you're doing this a lot, just make a shortcut to this instances and just put it over here. And then you can just jump to your instances. I don't know where I just put that. Did I just put that network like a dummy? Okay, let's come over here. I'm going to make a... Add that to my quick launch. Pin the quick access so we can just jump quickly to the instances. There's the thing, and there's the zip file. All right, so we're just going to grab it. I left click, I'm holding. I'm going to bring it over my browser window, which pops that up. And then we're going to just drop it right here. And now that big zip is uploading. But big zips upload better and faster than a million small files, like jars and configs and stuff. And that can be overloading. That can trip out the server and it might come back and say, Hey, man, I can't handle all this stuff you're throwing at me. But I could could have handled it if you would have put it all in one. That's like, you know, you know, your friend made you a lunch to take to work. And it was like in a bag or a big lunch pail and it's all together in one thing. Versus giving you, like, here's a cookbook and here's all the ingredients. So now you you sit down at lunch, you only got 30 minutes to eat, but you got to cook your meal. That's what the server feels like when you upload all the files individually. You're like making it cook the meal before it can eat. But if you zip it all up ahead of time, you're making a lunch box or a lunch bag. Or like you're giving it a number one meal from McDonald's or Burger King or someplace like that. So you see this big giant whatever zip is uploading.
Make sure you check out my article on how to create a server pack from a forge pack and also have another one for how you create one from a fabric pack. It is very involved. There is guaranteed to be issues with this because for instance the pack that I'm using as an example they do have a server pack which means what that literally means is that all the mods that are client side i.e. that run on your computer only on your computer and not on the server have been removed. That's what it means. But because it's not removed because of the way this is being done, which is how most of you guys that are watching this video are doing it, then you're going to run your server three or four times to get rid of those client side mods. Okay, so whatever's it, remember we named it whatever. So we're going to check it over here. We're going to click on more and we're going to hit on archive. This is where would you like to unarchive it? Leave this alone. So then by default, the config, the mods, and that default config will show up. Why did I grab the default config anyways? Default config on 115.2 plus is the world server config folder as a default config folder. And if it exists when your world is created, the server config on your world will be populated with that. So that way your server doesn't come up with weirdo settings. And on archive. Bam, right there on the top. We don't need that zip no more. So we'll delete it. And if you look, okay, all these notifications. Let's go into the config folder and you will see it has folders of configs and configs. Let's Tommel, because we're doing 116.5, see? Okay, and we don't need a definition, guys. All right, so that was, uh, let's click on a little home button, and then default configs, that's the stuff that's going to go in the world server config folder, and then here's our mods, easy peasy lemon squeezy, just like I was telling you, you could be anybody. Uh, last person I helped was No Dot. I'm not sure how to pronounce N O period, but there you go. Whatever. So easy peasy lemon squeezy. There it is. So then the next thing we do after this, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just go there. Is we're gonna run console. So we're gonna go to console. I could have did it from the home button, but let's just do it from the console, which comes down here, and then you hit start. Now, Bisec likes to restart three times so you can ignore the first two starts or whatever. That's because it's like, oh, I'm trying to detect what's going on here, da 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 da. Um, in this case, I didn't even, I didn't even load a jar file. It's the wrong thing. It's trying to load up bucket. You know, silly me. I think uh, No is about to have this problem. Now I'm on premium. Let's kill that. That is the wrong thing. Please. All right. And it's good that you see in the wrong thing. So now those of us on premium can just load up the right thing. We can come on down here to hit mod pack menu and we can go to forge and then we can choose the latest forge or whatever. I want the one for 116.5. And then come down here and I hit save. Yes, I would like to keep my current files, which would be now a little messy because I let that bucket thing run. We'll just ignore all that. And now when I hit the console. So let's restart. Now my article 
will actually cover it because you're probably you're also going to need to upload the correct forge and the forge libraries or if you're doing fabric the fabric and the fabric libraries it's it's worth it to spend an extra few bucks for the premium if 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 you ask me budget is technically for the people that really know what they're doing but hey you know what just because you know what you're doing just get premium and use coupon code CREASEL for 25% off. Sometimes more, depending on the season, but always 25% off your first month's rent. CREASEL. K-R-E-E-Z-X-I-L. So, we see that the forge is actually loading correctly now. Now, thankfully for this example, all the Mod 6... They made sure that all their mods actually work server side and client side so nothing's gonna actually crash. So it'd be nice if something crashes, because then I could show you like, oh, just gotta remove the top one and then restart the server. <laughs> 